Southampton has a remarkable history. Each century is filled to the brim with people and events that left their mark on the character and identity of the town today. Some years stick in the memory more than others. 1976, the year of Southampton Football Club's FA Cup triumph. 1940, the Southampton Blitz. 1912, the fateful sinking of the RMS Titanic. 1620, the sailing of the Mayflower for the New World. All these stories deserve to be told, but there is a date which, perhaps more than any other, shaped the geography of the town for hundreds of years, 1338. In that year, the town was attacked by French and Genoese mercenaries who put the town to the flame and the sword. The raid resulted in the impressive medieval defences many of which still survive. Before the raid, Southampton was a flourishing maritime centre. Merchants brought wine to the town and wool was exported abroad. The wealth and prosperity of the town related to the wool and wine trade was increased because of the easy access to the town by the merchants and their vessels. At this time, no walls protected the town quays and this helped in the town's prosperity. In 1337, war began with France between King Edward III of England and King Philip VI of France. This intermittent conflict lasted over 116 years and is known to historians as the Hundred Years' War. It was in the October of 1338 that the town was attacked. According to the chronicler John Stowe, writing during Tudor times, The 4th of October, 50 galleys, well manned and furnished, came to Southampton about nine of the clock and sacked the town, the townsmen running away by fear. By the break of the next day, they which fled, by help of the country thereabout, came against the pirates and fought with them in the which skirmish were slain to the number of 300 pirates. A 14th century writer speaks of citizens at mass in church, but attacked by the marauding enemy who had no regard of the sanctuary that a sacred place was thought to offer. St Michael's Church was re-consecrated the following year, suggesting that this was the church that was attacked. For hundreds of years, the date was thought to be Sunday the 4th of October, but the earliest written reference to the raid actually makes it clear that the attack took place on Monday the 5th of October, the day after the traditional date. How many attackers took part in the raid? John Stowe mentions 50 galleys, and elsewhere English writers reckoned at a force of 20,000 sailing on the expedition to harry the port towns of England. Two French sources suggest the likely number of ships was actually four, which indicates that there were about 800 fighting men. They probably landed at the bottom of what is now Bugle Street and forced their way through the town, plundering as they went. Their band was led by a soldier called Hugh Quiret, and his men were armed with lances, shields and troops of crossbowmen from Genoa feared for their ceaseless firing. It's possible that an early cannon called a pot de fer may have been used against Southampton. A French letter written in July 1338 mentions the movement of a small cannon that was sent from Rouen, presumably as part of this expedition. If it was used, it would be one of the earliest uses of cannon against any English town. It's unclear how much resistance the French attackers faced. An English report written shortly after the raid says that the defenders not only neglected entirely to provide for the defence of parts threatened, but basically fled with the men of the said town on sight of the enemy. Other chroniclers writing later talk of a valiant counter-attack 
leaving 300 enemy pirates dead, including the son of the King of Sicily. Historians still debate the extent of the defences. The cost to the town was immense. Some 192 large barrels of wine waiting for shipment in Southampton were captured. 150,000 pounds of wool the same and the foreign merchants who had used Southampton as their base fled the town for the safer harbour of Bristol. For a full year after the raid there are no records of any wool shipments at all. Much of the town appears to have been put to the flame and archaeological excavations along the junction of the High Street and what was known as Broad Lane suggest a ditch was dug to dispose of the burnt timbers and ruins once the rebuild began. The raid resulted in new and much improved defensive fortifications encircling the town. The walls were one and a quarter miles long and included 29 towers and eight gates and a double moat. Many of these incredible defences still stand. They serve as a reminder of the threat of war and of the strength of Southampton's men and women in overcoming adversity. <laughs>